Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. In this video, I'll explain how to start with ChatGPT plugin development and yeah, how you can uh, build your own stuff and uh, test it out with ChatGPT. So let's uh, jump to my desktop. And what we see here is the uh, Sparrow ChatGPT plugin called Receipt Assistant. So the idea of this plugin is to provide option for the users to upload the information to JGBT and also to provide a storage. So um, uh, when user would uh, process the uh, document, user would be able to store the ChatGPT outputs, uh, to store output for multiple receipts. And in the future, user could ask questions about those receipts to summarize the data and, and so on and, uh, and work with, uh, with this uh, data and um, in through multiple ChatGPT sessions. Okay, and uh, as you start, there's a great uh, uh, GitHub repo called Plugins Quick Start from OpenAI. <clears throat> it provides nice step-by-step -step instructions um, and it explains how to start plugin on your uh, local host and how to refer it from ChatGPT environment. There's also nice documentation from OpenAI about chat uh, plugins development. Uh, there are uh, different sections here, like how to get started, uh, how to develop um, plugin with authentication, multiple examples, uh, hands-on examples are provided. So you could not only go through the documentation, you could also see actual uh, working examples. And if I jump to my development environment, <clears throat> this is the our Receipt Assistant plugin. As soon as you add more functionality, then uh, obviously the code would grow. But uh, as you start, there are three main files um, that you should pay your attention. The one is a, the first one is AI plugin JSON. This is the metadata file, and you define here a plugin name, description, authentication type, if any. Uh, if you build um, uh, the plugin and you develop it right now, you host it from the from the local host. So then authentication none should be used. If you deploy <coughs> plugin to production, you could um, uh, enable. Uh, out of the box, chat GPT authentication and get the um, user information from chat GPT. This way, you could securely store, like in our case, um, data that user uploads. Uh, it will be associated with the username. Then <clears throat> there's a Python script where you implement endpoints, <clears throat> and those endpoints will be invoked from chat GPT. So the first one, first endpoint is called. Uh, uh, upload receipt info. This endpoint returns information about uh, to the user how to upload the receipt. Second one returns actual data for the uploaded receipt based on the ID, the receipt ID. <coughs> Sorry, in in my case, I don't have yet this uh, external application that handles upload, so I'm just returning uh, local array of data uh, from uh, which is stored over here, and this array of data is initialized with OCR. Output <coughs> from Paddle OCR <coughs> from the receipt, and uh, there's no any metadata here, no relationships. The only thing is that uh, there's an order, uh, the order of the data is the same like it is returned from the OCR. And uh, what is great about ChatGPT is that it automatically can identify relationships between fields like the item names and item price based on, uh, based on the order of the original array. Okay, and uh, in order for ChatGPT to be able to call uh, those endpoints, we have um, open API schema, and uh, you need to type this manually. And uh, but it's kind of uh, self-explanatory and not too complex. It may look uh, cumbersome at first, but it's really not too complex. You you define uh, endpoint name, then you define operation ID, description of the operation and parameters, uh, input parameters and output response. And uh, as soon as you define summaries and description, you should um, provide it, it in a very clear way because this helps, those descriptions will help uh, ChatGPT to understand which function, which endpoint to call at a certain time. And you need, don't need to define any flow or, or um, sequence of how those functions will be invoked. You just need to provide clear descriptions and ChatGPT will figure out the flow by itself. Uh, and this is how it looks visually. So we have uh, 
receipt data, it uh, accepts username and receipt ID, and there's a receipt info that uh, accepts just the username. Okay, and now I can go and call. Uh, I can uh, I can show you how it works from the ChatGPT environment. I can start the script. The script is started, and using this localhost and port uh, 5003, I could um, uh, test this plugin from ChatGPT. Okay, so let me go over here and. As in the plugins quick start is also explained that you can refer to a local uh, host plugin from uh, from ChatGPT by installing uh, it uh, through standard uh, dialog. So we can go to the GPT-4 uh, plugins and we can go to the plugin store and this option to develop your own plugin. So this is what we will be using and I copy paste the local port click find manifest file and um, the plugin is successfully identified and this plugin uh, helps to manage receipts with Sparrow and it says that you can read, store and review your receipts. So we install the plugin, uh, select it for the current uh, chat session and if I go back to the, uh, the runtime I see that messages are printed and this means that plugin communication works correctly from ChatGPT, it executes uh, REST calls and gets information about the plugin. Okay, so I can go here and say, uh, hi, I want uh, to store and uh, review uh, received data. And then we when wait for the response from ChatGPT and it says, sure, we can help with that. And would you like to get instructions how we can do this? Yes, yes, please. And then uh, ChatGPT understands that it should call first endpoint, which provides um, from plugin, which provides information about how to upload the file. And it says you should call this external application by that URL. And as soon as you upload the file there, you'll get the ID, copy paste this ID into the chat window and uh, we'll call the plugin to fetch uh, that file information based on the ID. And we can see this request was executed on the backend. That's fine. And now I don't have yet this uh, external application for file upload. So I just uh, simply say, okay, this is the, uh, this is the ID. I pretend that I get, I got it from the uh, external application. And now as soon as the ID is provided, ChatGPT understands that it should call a second endpoint, which uh, based on the ID, it uh, returns the array of data that you, which was extracted from the document. And we it return this array of data that we saw earlier in the Python script where uh, I just, uh, it's hard coded. And you can see that it successfully was able to identify items purchased and uh, all other fields like a date, time, and so on. And I even can ask to convert it to uh, JSON. Um, thanks, can show JSON for this data. And then ChatGPT returns well-structured JSON document uh, with items included and all the other data like uh, amounts, payment methods, and so on and so on. So all the stuff is uh, included into the JSON. And now we could store this, this JSON into the plugin and use uh, this data in the future to ask different questions about, uh, about the received items. And if you go back to the application, we can see that this call was executed to get received data based on the ID and in our case uh, data is hard coded from this array and we just uh, pass received info and this order information is uh, the order is the same like it was returned from from uh, OCR. So thanks for watching and what I would like to say uh, when you develop your plugin make sure to keep in mind that plugin should act as a utility which should help ChatGPT to process data. 
if you are looking to bring ChatGPT functionality into your existing application, then then it's not about plugin. Then you should call ChatGPT API and um, use that API inside your application. But plugin is something else. Plugin is the utility that would help users of the ChatGPT to work with uh, with the data. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.